Registered Phenomena Code 503 Object Class Alpha Orange Utility Hazard Types Temporal Hazard Sapient Hazard Grouped Hazard Aggression Hazard Containment Protocols Due to the anomalous nature of RPC-503, no containment is required. However, a perimeter is to be established around RPC-503-1 and areas designated by RPC-503 members. Any civilians that come close to this perimeter are to be informed that the area is closed off to the public and turned away. If any civilians resist or refuse ASF personnel, they are to be detained, administered amnestics, and released at the nearest city. Any requests for assistance or supply made by RPC-503 are not to be fulfilled until they have been reviewed and approved by at least one global director. RPC-503 is the designation given to a group of Teutonic Knights located near Poland. These knights have been able to hide from the world for the past few centuries due to the anomalous properties of the area in which they inhabit, now designated as RPC-503-1. The entire area known as RPC-503-1 is completely hidden from all means of observation, and can only be discovered through manned expeditions. In addition to this, RPC-503-1 is quite well hidden, located deep within forest, and is incredibly difficult to locate for anyone unfamiliar with the area. Once a subject enters RPC-503-1, they are seamlessly transported into another plane of existence. This can be observed by the forest holding RPC-503-1 spanning well beyond the confines of the forest in Poland, as well as the presence of multiple other RPC entities. RPC-503 is the first landmark one comes across when entering via RPC-503-1. It is theorized that RPC-503-1 is the source of multiple RPC entities, and that these entities escaped into our world prior to the establishment of RPC-503. RPC-503-1 has the additional anomalous property of halting the aging process in certain circumstances. Any living organism within RPC-503-1 will not age. Finally, RPC-503-1 spawns demon-like entities, now designated RPC-503-2. RPC-503-2 is incredibly hostile to all human life, especially members of RPC-503, and will attack them on sight. RPC-503-2 routinely attacks RPC-503 approximately once per month, going in massive waves in an attempt to overrun and destroy RPC-503. For more information on RPC-503-2, see Addendum-503-1. According to members of RPC-503, the Order was founded in 13 after reports of demons roaming the area were relayed to the Teutonic Order. The Teutonic Order sent Carl and Henrik, along with several hundred knights, to investigate and eliminate the threat. Their investigations, along with the help of the Inquisitors that would eventually form the FOA, led them to the discovery of both RPC-503-1 and RPC-503-2. Eventually, it was discovered that RPC-503-2 was a continuous threat, one that needed a dedicated force to combat in order to protect the populace. As such, RPC-503 was officially formed. RPC-503 members have been observed using and interacting with anomalous entities. They have observed the changing world around them, and have attempted to modernize their equipment to better combat RPC-503-2. However, due to a mix of the nature of their anomalous equipment and staunch traditionalism, many aspects of their original equipment have been upheld to this day. While equipment loadout can vary wildly from member to member, depending on the anomalous objects given to them and what is available to them, nearly all members of RPC-503 are equipped with the following. Plate mail armor enchanted with anti-thaumaturgic properties. 
otherwise known as anti-magic. This includes all layers of armor, gambeson, chainmail, great helm, etc., and is crafted in the Teutonic aesthetic. An assault rifle, usually non-anomalous, equipped with anti-thermaturgic rounds. Common rifles include AK-47s and AR-15s, though more anomalous rifles have been observed. At least three extra clips of anti-thaumaturgic ammunition. A bastard sword forged from anti-thaumaturgic steel, commonly referred to as Damascus steel. Currently, RPC-503 has 124 members and is led by Grandmaster Henrik. Grandmaster Henrik has repeatedly requested additional recruits and equipment from the Authority and the FOA ever since contact was established. Approval of current request is pending. Discovery RPC-503 was discovered by the Boons Occult of Tablung, in English, the Federal Occult Agency, otherwise known as the FOA. The Authority was contacted by the FOA to help contain RPC-503. Since RPC-503 resides in Poland, the FOA had no authority to properly contain RPC-503 for a long period of time. As such, an agreement was made between the FOA and the Authority. The Authority would be entirely responsible for the containment of RPC-503. However, half of the containment cost would be paid for by the FOA. In addition, any request made by RPC-503 must be approved by the FOA and the Authority and the FOA will be entirely responsible for fulfilling any approved requests. The FOA discovered RPC-503 when they uncovered ancient documents detailing the establishment of an as-yet-unheard-of chapter of the Teutonic Order. The FOA launched an expedition into the area mentioned in said documents, and eventually discovered RPC-503 and RPC-503-1. Addendum 503-1 Details on RPC-503-2 RPC-503-2 consists of many different kinds of entities. The following is a list of the currently known instances of RPC-503-2. Designation Code Name Description RPC-503-2-1 Degenerate Small imp-like creature less than one meter tall, frequently red in coloration. These entities possess limited combat capabilities, and can easily be terminated by an average human, provided he is properly equipped. However, these entities come in large numbers, and have been observed using human wave tactics in combat. RPC-503-2-2 Despicable Humanoid demons with horns and tail. Size of average human. 1.86 meters, armed with sharp claws, swords, or spears, observed possessing above-average strength and being exceptionally capable in combat. Recent iterations have developed thick hides with the consistency of leather. These hides effectively function similarly to Kevlar armor, being capable of resisting small arms fire. RPC-503-2-3 Repulsive Recent variant with appearance similar to that of a humanoid porcupine, capable of launching quill-like objects at enemies at high speeds. These quills are capable of piercing armor, and quills on instances' bodies have been observed obstructing melee combatants, providing a considerable close-quarters defense. However, the entities have been observed being easily killed by melee weapons if quills are somehow circumvented. RPC-503-2-4 Abhorrent Lizard-like beast similar in size to that of a horse, capable of launching high-powered explosives comprised of an unknown substance. Large tube-like protrusions extend from Entity's back. These tubes are used by the Entity to launch payloads over large distances. Entity is slow and cumbersome, lacking any ability to avoid attacks should it be threatened. Cumbersome nature of entities has shown to severely limit close quarters capabilities, causing poor performance against melee attackers. In addition, heavy gunfire or bombardment has proven effective against these entities. RPC-503-2-5 Abomination 
massive demon measuring 10 meters in height. Possesses thick hide capable of easily resisting rifle rounds up to 50 caliber shots. Frequently white in coloration. Possesses superhuman strength and has been observed destroying stone structures with ease. Resilient to damage even when being hit with armor-piercing rounds. Requires the equivalent of approximately two full MSTs to terminate. Addendum 503-2 Interview Log Interviewed Grandmaster Henrik Interviewer Dr. Davidson, FOA Agent Otto Forward After significant negotiations, Grandmaster Henrik Accepted authority request for an interview. FOA Agent Otto Due to a clause in the agreement between the FOA and the authority, was required to be present. The following logs are translated from German. Begin log. Thank you for agreeing to this interview, Mr. Henrik. Think nothing of it, Doctor. After the assistance your organization has provided, is the least I could do. <clears throat> for the record, it was the FOA that provided you the recruits you requested, Grandmaster Henrik. Yeah, and I thank you for that, good sir. Regardless, mine point still stands. Now, shall we begin? Yes. Do not worry. This will not take long. Now, let's begin with your order's establishment. Do you know when it was founded? Do I know? I was there. It was on the 13th of August of the summer of 1349. We've received reports of devils wandering the countryside, laying waste to villages. Naturally, we thought to see reports to be a pagan force, pillaging the lands. We uh, never expected to find true-blooded demons. And how did you fight off these demons when you first arrived? It was not easy in those early years. Our swords and arrows did nothing against the beast, and we were cut down by the dozens. It was only after vigorous prayer and the blessings of our weapons with holy water that we were able to drag them back. You said it was not easy during those early years. What exactly changed later on that made it easier? <sighs> this is a strange land, with many strange creatures. Uh, not all of them are hostile, as we soon discovered. We found spirits, entities, as we would call them, that were willing to help. Some of them we know very well, such as Archangel. Others were less familiar. It was these entities that helped us survive in this new environment. It was them that showed us how to craft the steel that would drive back the demons. It was them that blessed our armor to resist our blows. And it was them that helped us keep up with the changing times of the outside. With all due respect, why did you not simply leave after you beat back the initial wave? Well, we had a duty, Vister. The scriptures are clear that we as good Christians must fight evil wherever it may raise its head. Normally, this means turning others away from sin, for stopping people from committing evil. Once we knew it was demons we were dealing with, it was quite clear what we had to do. Let us return to the questions at hand, yes? So, these entities, it was they that kept you informed of what was happening outside? And they were the ones that provided you with modern arms? The answer to that question is complicated. Sometimes, yeah. They directly showed us what we wanted to see. Sometimes they gave us the new arms. Sometimes they simply showed us how to create them ourselves. Other times they provided us with the means to learn what we needed to. It was us who had to gather the information ourselves. We watched the world change around us. We watched as Europe was torn apart by events that was far outside of our control. Events that we weren't allowed to interfere in. And why could you not interfere? It was part of our agreement with the entities that we've contacted. We could watch and learn from the outside, but we could not interact with it. If we could, we would not have left our brothers to be killed off in the way they were. 
Indeed, we mourned when the altar was destroyed. Grandmaster Henrik appears visibly distraught. Agent we do not wish to revive unpleasant memories without reason. Allow me to ask the question from now on, if you please. As you wish. Good. Now, Mr. Henrik, how did you attain more men if you could not interfere with the outside world? Ah, yeah. We were able to get new recruits via a small clause in the agreement. While we could not compact the outside world, we could attempt to recruit men, mercenaries, seeking riches and eternal life, men of God seeking to fight evil, and a few lost souls. We would be surprised who would take us up on our offers, and who who could find us if they really wanted to. However, recruitment became difficult as the years went on. Less people were interested. Fewer came looking for us. On the men of Cod were very busy with other matters. We were able to find some other recruits when times became difficult. It seems that not just man wishes to fight off these demons. What sort of entities came to your aid? Oh, there are too many to name. Angels were the most frequent ones. <laughs> they were quite stir when they first arrived. We also caught strange humanoid creatures. They called themselves Fae, I believe. Really? We received aid from some very unexpected sources. <laughs> Have you ever heard of an angel of the Lord and a Valkyrie argue over semantics? It's quite a sight. I'm sure it is. How long have you been fighting these demons, RPC-503-2? Zunsa Foundation. That would be 670 years. We still have some brothers from that time. Though, we have lost many, including Brother Carl. I understand you were close to Mr. Carl. He was the first Grand Master of our order, and my closest friend. And when was Mr. Carl terminated? Was his death what granted you your current position? Agent that is not relevant to this interview. It is relevant to the FOA. It's alright here, Doctor. I have made mine peace long ago. Yeah, his death is what granted me his position. He died in 1752, killed by an abomination. He did not die in vain, though. If it wasn't for his sacrifice, that abomination would not have tied, and the entire order would have been lost. And do not think I have missed the insinuation behind your question, Mr. Rato. I would have never killed Brother Carl, directly or otherwise. Noted. Agent. The next interruption will result in ASF personnel escorting you out of this room. Do not interrupt us again. I will take your silence as an acknowledgement. Let us get back on track. How frequently are you attacked by RPC-503-2, and what is the intensity of these attacks? We are attacked once or twice in a month. The intensity depends on what we have determined to be what phase the moon is in. Full moons always bring more frequent and intense attacks. The more intense attacks bring about a few hundred degenerates, a few dozen despicables, and thirty-ish repulsives. The worst attacks bring a few aberrants, disasters, bring an abomination. I see. Have these attacks gotten any easier with the implementation of modern weaponry and defenses? Nine. If anything, they have gotten more intense. We have been seeing new kinds of demons, more ranged, more suited to destroying defensive positions. We believe that they are adapting just as we have. Unfortunate. Last question. Do you know why RPC-503-2 keeps attacking you? What do you think they are trying to do? I cannot be certain. But what I have seen over the years of fighting them and taking out their nest and defending against them, 
I think that they are preparing something. I believe that they are an expeditionary force. Scouts, since in to clear the way for the main army. We keep finding strange structures in their nest. They are difficult to look at. Put the most definitely gateway like structures. I am certain that they would be used to hasten whatever army is coming. And I believe that our interference, our raids, and our presence has prevented them from achieving their goals. There is something about our homes that drives them. Perhaps it is the ideal staging ground for an invasion. As to why they are doing this, I believe it is to end mankind. To take more direct control over the earth. This is why we have asked you for more men and equipment. We have been fighting for years, and our numbers dwindle every battle, while theirs only grows. I fear what may happen should we fail, and they gain the foothold. That will not happen, Mr. Henrik. We will make sure of it. On that, we are agreed. That is good to hear. Thank you, both of you. No, thank you, Mr. Henrik, for your time. End log. Closing statement. Following the interview with Grandmaster Henrik, the FOA has been far more willing to accept RPC-503's requests. Perhaps they, too, got the information they were after. Addendum 503-3 Recovered FOA Report Warning. Classified. Level 4 access required for viewing. Boon's Occult of Tablung. Report. Interview with Potential Threat 084, here to referred to as PT-084. Written Report. Following the interview conducted with PT-084C, also known as Grandmaster Henrik FOA Agent Otto has determined that PT-084 can be safely reclassified as Potential Asset 034, now designated as PA-034. In addition, Agent has recommended that the foreign entity threat frequently called Demons be reclassified from PT-084-D to Severe Threat 156, now designated ST-156. Initial theories that PT-084 have been compromised by corrupt parties have been found to be unfounded. However, evidence suggests that non-human, potentially dangerous entities have infiltrated PT-084. However, reports from Agent show no evidence of malicious intent from these entities. Further investigations required before PA-034 can be classified as an asset. For the time being, PT-084 shall now be designated PA-034, and further requests from PA-034 shall be looked upon more favorably. Sent recruits shall be given the secondary goal of investigating non-human members of PA-034, to determine beyond a reasonable doubt that these entities pose no threat to the FOA or Germany as a whole. Gott mit uns.